Welcome to the Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. So glad you're with us today. Uh, today, as as I have been doing before, I'm going through a scriptural the scriptural basis to Christ Our Life Ministries, and you can find this on our website on um, the Liberating Secret website, and we will have links to where these videos can be seen as well. So pick up that. Go to our website, and you will you will see all the scriptural bases. So now, what did um, as I see what we talked about last time is God's plan um, in in the fall in the fall that God had a plan all along that it, that Satan did not blindside God at the fall at all whatsoever because God has a plan. I mean, He is the master planner. And he's the one that has the true agenda. Even though Satan thinks he has an agenda, he has no agenda whatsoever. It's fallen anyway. It could not be that higher than God because God Almighty has a plan in all of the negatives and all the sufferings that we experience in this life. And so it's important to see that. But along with that, it is also important to see that just because that God uses and meant the fall and he's going to use it for his glory and as a train as a place of training for us that does not justify us that does not justify us and because we have had a great fall in our being i mean actually we're going to read the scriptures and that's where we're going today the next emphasis is the results of mankind's fall and so um we're going to look at that and I think sometimes people go to that extreme where they they think, oh, God meant it, and he sovereignly knew it, and uh, predicted it, and planned a provision for it, so I'm off the hook. But basically, man, we're not off the hook. We're not. We need a Savior. We need deliverance. But first, we need to look at the results of the fall. You know, there's so many people that do not like this teaching when I teach this. Basically, because they think, wait a minute, I don't understand what you're saying. Because I go right straight to what the scripture says. And the scripture says that we have been indwelt by Satan. The fall caused us to be invaded by a spirit of self-centeredness. It's really Satan's spirit, own spirit. He invaded our humanity. He invaded my spirit. He invaded my soul. He invaded my uh, body. So, and basically that's why we even die today is because of that spirit invasion of man that caused us to fall and cause our precious humanity, which was created by God to be misused by Mr. Sin himself, Satan. And so, uh, because that's so strong, people can hardly take that. What do you mean Satan indwelt humanity? Well, I've heard people say, you know, my little baby, don't tell me that Satan indwells humanity. Or they will say, Satan is not omnipresent, so he can't be uh, indwelt in our humanity. And what about these innocent little babies? What, if, what happens when they die if they have Satan? Well, all these questions we hope to answer, you know, on this in this lesson, uh, the results of ma man's um, fall. And basically, there's one woman that just kept arguing and arguing with me about it. And finally, I thought, you know, I'm not going to try to convince her of anything anymore because the best way to handle it is just give her the scriptures. You know, uh, sometimes, some time ago, I saw Billy Graham on Larry King. And Larry King kept trying to trap Billy Graham by saying, are you saying that so-and-so are the Muslims, all Muslims are going to hell? Are you saying that all Jews are going to hell? Are you saying, and Billy Graham never really answered his question. He just answered it by saying, well, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So he never did anything but quote scripture. So I take I take that that wisdom from him, actually. And so I stopped trying to defend that and trying to debate that point. So what I what did I do? The Lord gave me, oh, I guess about 30 scriptures from the Bible. So I just say, you know what? It doesn't seem like to the average person or the baby that Satan is indwelling that person. 
but it doesn't seem like that to me. But Jesus does say we have to be born again, so we have to be delivered from something. So, um, so, but it doesn't seem that way to me, but I can't go by what seems right to me. I have to go by what God says. And God certainly declares it over and over and over again through the whole scripture. So if God declares it, I don't want to make him a liar like Eve did in the garden and continue in the results of the fall like I would if I continued to believe that that's a lie because God, what God says, I believe, and that makes me a believer. And as believers, we better see the gospel in the fullness. And I don't really believe that you can see the gospel in its fullness and see the deliverance was give, that was given to us through the cross of Jesus Christ. And so you see the depths of the fall. And actually, I have a good friend, Sharon, and she testifies that she was saved 25 years ago, but it took her 25 years to realize what she was saved from, <laughs> because in her own experience, that is. So, and God will show that to us. I mean, he showed it. He, he continually is faithful to take us through these periods of times where he absolutely shows us things we don't want to see, the hidden things of darkness that have, have held us probably since before we were saved because we're refusing to see what God says and what God sees about us and so and why we actually need the Savior. You know, actually, this gives the Lord Jesus Christ so much beauty that he would die for us and deliver us from so great a fall. So it's important to see the results of the fall. So, and like I said, man, like I said, we, we really don't want to see it because basically we want to justify ourselves. That's kind of the, um, and that's still the fallen mentality of who you used to be. And I always say it like that because, you see, uh, through the cross, we've been delivered from the old nature, and we're going to go into that um, in, a, in a few lessons ahead. But, um, but we still think like the old man. So we still have, uh, we, we call it stinking thinking because we're still thinking like the old man, even though the old man has been, we've been crucified with Christ, the old man is out, the new man is in, which is Christ himself living inside of us. We still think with the, with the mind of Satan. I, I usually say this. I say we have the heart of Jesus because he's moved into my heart, cleansed me of my sins, but I still think like Satan. So, so because of that, we just need to study the scriptures. I mean, we love the scriptures, and that's why we have scriptural basis. If we just came up with our own ideas of what Christianity is, I think they would be pretty lame. And I think a lot of Christianity has come up with that. That's why it's very important to see the depths of the fall. Then we can see the heights of the redemption and our Redeemer. And we can see the faithfulness of our Redeemer and exactly what he paid the price for. So it causes us to love him more. Okay, let's start looking at some of these scriptures. Let's look in Ephesians chapter 2. And I think Ephesians chapter 2 just is so clear. And I mean, if you have different translations, that's good. I certainly like the King James or the New American Standard because I want to get closest to what God, what the original scripture is saying, and I think those two scriptures, even though the King James, a lot of people say they have all the these and thous and, you know, well, okay, I look past all that and I can change the thee and thou to how it relates to me, and, 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 um, but I think it gets closest to what actually the scripture is saying. This is what God says about your past and about who you used to be before you found Christ. Because really, we've, had, we've, ha we've all had false identities. We've all had false identities. I mean, I say that again, because our identity was really the identity of the satanic fall within us, of the nature of the, of the spirit that lived inside of us that caused us uh, to have his identity. Because what, who, what was his identity? His identity, I'm a just me for me, and I'm gonna, I'm the master of my own life, and I'm uh, nobody masters me, nobody tells me what to do. I live my own life. 
I'm uh, total and and I'm pretty self-centered, but that's the way everybody is in the world. So, oh well, that's just normal. Well, believe it or not, it's uh, it is normal for the satanic race, the fallen race, but it is not normal for the people of God. And so, I'm talking to you Christians. Let me read to you who you were before you were saved and who what identity you had. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were, see that's past tense. Okay? Wherein in times past, this is who you were, you walked according to the course of this world. What is the court what you walked according to the course of this world. In other words, you didn't walk according to your own ideas or your own thinking or your own identity. You walked according to the um, ideas and the identity and the selfishness and the self-centeredness of, of this world. Well, we know First John tells us that Satan is the god of this world. You walked according to his, his due. Okay? According, and then the second thing it says in chapter in verse 2 of, of Ephesians 2, according to the prince of the power of the air. So you walked according to the powers of this world. You work, walked according to the power of the prince of power of air. You know what? Who is the prince of the power of the air? We know Satan is. So what is this saying? You're not walking according to your own power. You're not walking according to your own nature. Because that's actually what nature is. Nature is your power source, or the source that you live by, you see. So you're, you're not even walking by your own power source. <coughs> or because you're walking according to the power of something else, of a spirit. And then the next part of the verse says it. The spirit that works in the children of disobedience. What is disobedience? Disobedience is believing that I can be my own savior. Well, the lost people don't normally don't think that. They're not thinking that deep. They're thinking on the surface. They're thinking Satan's thoughts. So they don't understand that. But but you're always living by the power, the spirit of the prince of this world and the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. What is disobedience? Disobedience is unbelief in the fact that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord and the one that owns you and has redeemed you back by his blood, you see. That's disobedience. So the people that do not know Jesus, do not have him as Lord and Savior, are not walking according to themselves like they think they are. It's a deception. It's a lie. Now, what else does it say? Among whom also we had our conversation in times past. This is talking about the past, before you were saved. How did we live? In the lust of our flesh. All we could think about what was going to satisfy my flesh, what was going to uh, um, make me have enjoyment in my flesh and pleasure in my flesh, you see, and bring me a satisfaction so that I would uh, not have to suffer, basically. That's what I lived by in the past. Maybe some of us still are still thinking that's what we need to satisfy us now, and that's false thinking. That's, uh, that's Satan's thinking. And what? how did we also live in times past fulfilling the desires of the flesh? Our whole life was centered around what was going to satisfy me, what was going to fulfill me, what was going to make me happy. You see, I mean, the American way, that sounds like the American way, doesn't it? I think that's why we've gotten ourselves financially and economically in such a fix, because that's how we're living. But that's how the world lives, too, so it's not just us. And of the mind, and of course, our mind is to, see, it's the fallen mind. It's the mind of Satan. It's the knowledge of good and evil. We saw that in the two trees in the garden. We're living by his mind who, and which is a knowledge of good and evil, meaning I'm going to decide what's good for me and I'm to, going to decide what's evil for me. What is good for me? Anything that satisfies my flesh, makes me feel good, and doesn't challenge me and doesn't uh, uh, give me any suffering. That's good. Well, what's evil when I have this kind of mindset? Anything that's going to come against me, that's going to challenge me, that's good. 
That's evil. You see, anything. So that's why there's so many divorces. That's why people are separating. That's why people are so confused. That's why, because they're living by the mind of Satan and they're trying to say what is good and what is evil for themselves. That's the knowledge of good and evil. That's independent thinking. That's thinking independent from who you are. Now the Bible is declaring this is who you were. Now let's finish it. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Children of wrath. We saw that we were vessels of wrath. Vessels of wrath. Vessels of anger. That's why people's angry, because they're not getting their own way. I mean, with the economics the way it is today, I mean, we hear of people even committing suicide. They did that in the first depression, and hopefully we won't go through a depression now. We'll see. But nevertheless, if you're a Christian, you, if you put your trust in, in your economical status, you, it, it will fail you, regardless of whether we go through a depression or not. So our, the point is, put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this gives us a pretty vivid picture of who we were before we were saved. Now let me read some more scriptures to you that will that certainly clarify it. And like I said, I have about 30. I don't have time really to read all 30, but I'm going to post this on the website, like I said. There's a scripture in John chapter 3 after, after Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again and uh, uh, whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved, John 3, 16. He goes on talking about the light. And he's talking about how if you believe, you won't live in condemnation. That's my son's one of my son's favorite verses. He, he got freed from that verse. But the, it goes on to say that uh, people that want to hide their sins, they hate the light. And it says in verse 3 that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because they want to hide their sins. Because they want to hide in darkness. So men love darkness. That's, un, that's a fallen state. Another one is John 1. He, John 1, 27 says that we receive the, consequent, the uh, recompense of our era inside of us. And let me receive in themselves the recompense of their era, the result of their own era, which is the result of living an independent uh, Satan indwelt life, is that you, you reap that, be that benefit of horror and fear and separation and shame inside yourself. And it causes, it, it continually, it's the real me meaning you're so miserable. And uh, Acts 13, verse 47 says, You judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. If you do not believe, your, believe God and believe the gospel, you are judging yourself unworthy of eternal life. Can you believe that? Now, that scripture comes in where... Paul turns to the Gentiles because the Jews were, received, were not receiving the gospel. And he said, you judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Goodness. It says in 1 John that you're a child of the devil. Very clear. It's, that's John 3.10. It says in John 8.44 that he was, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. And they were, they were declaring... Abraham is our father. And he says, oh no, if Abraham was your father, you would believe me. And he said, you, your father is the devil. And, and the lust of your father you do. So your father is the devil. That's very clear. The Bible in Romans 6, 17 says that we're slaves of sin. And um, uh, John, 1 John 4 says that we have the spirit of error inside of us. If you're a child of God, you have the spirit of truth in you. If you're a child of the devil, you have the spirit of error, and you love your wicked ways. You don't think of them as wicked because you're self-justifying yourself constantly. Um, and, and, and the Bible in 1 John 4 says you contain Satan who is in this world. And it says in Ephesians 5 that you, were, you are formerly darkness. Your heart is dark, darkened. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 that your heart and your mind is darkened because you're living in darkness. Because if Satan is the prince of the power of darkness, you're living in his darkness. And, uh, and so you can't see, it says, unless the light of the glorious gospel come into your heart and set you free. So that's what we're about 
doing is presenting the fullness of the gospel so that you can know your total liberation in Christ and liberated from, from this state. You're in a state of being that you cannot deliver yourself from. You can't try to fix yourself. You can't try to do new revel, new, uh, new year's resolute resolutions enough to decide you're going to stop doing this and start doing this and try to be good. You cannot get yourself out of this fix. That's why we need to deliver. It says in Romans chapter 3, I love Romans chapter 3. It's a vivid picture. None of us are righteous. We are altogether unprofitable. There is no one that is good. I mean, when people say that don't know Christ, well, I'm a good person. That's the biggest lie in the, in the universe. There's none of us good, the Bible says. Not one. I don't care how good you look, how good you act, how many times you might go to church. If you are not born again, if you do not have the Spirit of God living inside of you, you are not good. We're, you're just, it's self-righteousness. It's total self-righteousness. Uh, it says that we are altogether unprofitable and not good. Romans 3 says our tongue is full of deceit because we're deceived ourselves. And it says our mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. This is Romans chapter 3. It says misery is in our way. Everything that we do ends up being miserable. All of it fails. It's vanity because you're trying to live life apart from God. So therefore, everything you do, everything that you're trying to do apart from God and apart from His ways ends up being vanity. It will fail. If it does not fail in your lifetime, it will fail in your children's lifetime. You see, it will. Because there is no, and it says, the way of peace you have not known. The way of peace means cessation of law, of war. That's what the definition of peace is, is this, that war ceases. You see, as long as I've got war inside of me, I've got turmoil. And I don't have peace. Peace is, it's like nothing. It's like there's nothing there. Oh, some, one time somebody was confused because their loved one died, but they had like nothing inside of them. And, I, and we said to them, well, it's, that nothing is peace. You don't feel anything. That's the peace of Jesus. You don't have any war with this. You don't have any conflict with this because that's Jesus in you. Oh, she said, that's wonderful because you know that, that your loved one is in heaven, that he's a Christian. And uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, and I'm going to turn to that because I'll, that's one of my favorite verses to read. Chapter 36, uh, starting with verse 26, it says this. It says, um, <clears throat> A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit. Now, this is, this is the gospel right in the Old Testament. I love that. I always say Ezekiel prophesied of the new covenant right in the middle of the old covenant. He was prophesying of the new day. A new heart. That's the heart of Jesus when you find him. Also, I will give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away your stony heart. What is that? The heart of stone. The heart that cannot find God. That is distant and far away from the God. And But I'll take that heart away from you. And I will give you the heart of flesh. That means a pliable heart. One that God comes in and, and renews and brings alive with his own spirit. And, I, and he, the next verse says that. And I will put my spirit within you. The whole point is the human being is always going to be indwelt by a spirit. It's going to be indwelt by the spirit of Satan and, have a, and be a, have a stony heart and have blindness. Or you're going to be indwelt by the spirit of Christ who is going, will set you free. Because where the spirit is, there is liberty. That's where your freedom will be. That he says, I will put my spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness within you and cause you to walk in my ways. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I don't even have to figure out how to walk in you. You're going to cause me to do it because the spirit within me is going to cause me to do it. That's why I always say that a little child at 10 years old, when he stole money from his mother's purse, didn't become a sinner. We were born a sinner because it says in the book of uh, Romans chapter in, in uh, chapter 5, it says that we were all dead in sin in Adam. So even when you're born, we're born sinners because we're born with a satanic spirit within us. I mean, God says so, so we better agree with him. Okay. 
and he's going to cause me to walk in his statues, and I shall keep his judgment and do them. So we don't even have to worry about how to be the Christian life. When you're indwelt by his spirit and you know him living and you have his presence within you, he's going to cause you to live the life. So I see our time's over and we'll continue with our next lesson next time. So thank you and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. I hope that you've been blessed by today's program. These programs have been brought to you by Christ Our Life Ministries based in Louisville, Kentucky. If you would like to know more about us, please check out our websites, www.theliberatingsecret.org and www.spiritbroadcasting.net. The Liberating Secret is our literary site. We offer many articles by many authors, and I have my own writings on it as well. You will find a bookstore where you will be able to purchase many of my own books and booklets as well as other authors who also teach the truths of liberation. We have an online monthly newsletter that you might want to sign up for. Check it out. You're going to be blessed if you do. Now for our, uh, our other website, which is the Spirit Broadcasting Network. All of our past TV and radio programs are being broadcast on this website. If you have a favorite program, you might want to find it here. If you are interested in any events such as conferences, retreats, or home meetings that we are conducting, please check out our calendar that you will find on both of our websites. We have an annual conference here in Louisville, Kentucky in May. It is always held the weekend after Mother's Day. We have great fellowship, great teaching, and great music by Ron Block, and that he's from Nashville. Twice a year, I teach a woman's retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Women, don't wait to sign up, sign up for Polly's. You will love it. If you would like to have a meeting in your area, please email me at sylviap at theliberatingsecret.org. And thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you. Goodbye.